Hello, everybody. It's Joel Brown here with the Free Men Report coming at you live here in, in downtown Orlando. We are currently filming, and we have a lot of people here. It's a busy night here in Orlando, Florida, and we're actually going to be getting some interviews with people. As you can see, we have the Make America Great Again hat on. So basically what we're doing here today is we're going to be filming people, and we're going to be asking them if they think that President Trump deserves the Nobel Peace Prize for being the first president in U.S. history to meet with North Korea. Excuse me, buddy. Just a quick question for you, man. Oh, you got headphones? Hey, buddy, just a quick question. No cameras? All right, off camera, off camera. Just a quick question. So I'm sure you heard the news. President Trump was the first president to step foot in North Korea. How do you feel about that? Fuck President Trump. Wow. Okay. Did you hear about the news, though? I don't need to hear about it. Why not? It's important. Fair. He's enough. making history. Fair enough question. Do you think he deserves the Nobel Peace Prize for being the first president to uh, step in North Korea? That's a fair enough question. But no, I don't think he does. Why not? He's about the glory. I'm sorry about that? He's about the glory. The glory? Oh, well, I mean, he's the president, so he kind of has to do these things, you know? But don't you give him some credit for doing that? No. Who are you? Let me ask. What do you support? I, I'm Joel Brown. I'm with the Free Men Report on Facebook. Give us a like if you can. Who are you are supporting? Trump. You are you Trump? Absolutely. Did you see the hat? What nationality are you? I'm Hispanic. Sellout. No. Why do you say that? You're a sellout. I'm a sellout. Why am I a sellout? Hispanic from what? You Mexican? Uh, no. Uh, Panamanian. But I was born here in Florida. Okay. So you don't feel the burden that some Mexican... Maybe not. But how do you feel about that? I feel like you're a sellout. Well, how do you feel? Okay, fair enough. How do you feel about the wall? We ain't talking about that, bro. We can. We can, but you're a sellout. I'm a sellout? Is that all you're going to keep saying? You really rocking out here with them? I didn't even notice the hat. I didn't you didn't notice the hat? Would you have stopped to, enter to talk to me if you saw the hat th at first? I might have punched you. That's very violent. <laughs> what? Do, you, do you hate him that much? I hate racism. How is he a racist? Serious question. I'm gonna ask you that question. How was he not? Fair enough, brother. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. So we actually have a stack of news here. So here's the news. Point the camera at the news. What does that headline say? It says Trump has granted clemency clemency to Alice Johnson, freeing the 63-year-old grandmother whose Turn case the was. Turn the camera. Turn you don't want the, you don't want to do this? Because President Trump freed. This is a real, this is from Business Insider. Yo. The, Kim Kardashian put that in front of his fucking face. But he did it. If he was racist, do you think he would have freed this black woman? Serious question. How old are you? How I'm 23. You got a lot to learn. How old are you, if I may ask? 30. Not that far off. Seven years. Okay. But, hey, man, I, I really encourage you to check these, these, these uh, articles out, man. This is big news. I mean, this woman went... To, she, I'm, I'm doing this all for free, brother. I'm risking myself out here for free. You're going to get your ass beat. Hey, man, if that happens, we got it all on camera. So thank you for your uh, cooperation, though, man. I'm going to go ahead and keep on asking other people the questions, but I appreciate you taking the time, all right? If you ever want to actually look at the news, though, let me know, all right? Check us out at the Free Men Report. Well, you heard it here first, folks. I'm a sellout. You heard it. Let me, let me ask this gentleman. Hey, buddy, just a quick question for you. I'm sure you heard the... N I'm sorry? No? Oh, he must have saw the hat. Hey, you willing to answer a question? No. Especially with that hat on. No, with the hat. It's, 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 hey, listen, do you, do you think I'm, what do you think this hat represents? Can I put the mic up? No comment. All right, man. Well, fair enough, man. Hey, you take it easy, all right? Enjoy your night. Let's ask this gentleman real quick. Hey, buddy, can I ask a quick question? Just a quick question. I'm sure you heard the news recently about President Trump being the first president to step in uh, North Korea. Did you hear about that? Yeah. How do you feel about that? I think we need to stay the hell out of it, denuclearize. Well, well Kim Jong peace. Well, Kim Jong Un actually uh, decided to denuclearize after he met with Trump. Do you think Trump deserves the Nobel Peace Prize for being the first president to do that? I think you're all full of bullshit and lying. Who's all? North Korea, America, Russia, all the other ones are nuclear. And if you really want to look at it, the biggest terrorist around is the United States of America. But as far as Trump goes, how do you feel about him? Trump, it's actually a yes and no because we do need a good businessman 
in in office because even since Reagan was there, Reagan was a good president, and Clinton was also a damn good president for the schools and stuff. Um, but when you came down to the Bush administrations and stuff, that was really screwed everything up. And then when you got Obama, Obama, he's not even. He was a part of a part of ISIS and all of them since he was 18 years old. That's debatable, but you might be onto something there. Oh, I belong to the anonymous. Really? We know. You everything. believe in Q? You with Q? Sure, we believe it all. So, in a way, you support Trump, right? Double agent. Hey, fair enough, man. Well, hey, you're actually the first person so far that's actually wanted to talk. Everybody else has just been telling me I'm a sellout and telling me they don't want to talk uh, with this hat. Because so. I'm a true-blooded American. That's me too. Not to say a fucking thing. Hey, likewise, man. Hey, that's my why I went. My daddy served 27 years for this country, so I say it this way. If you don't like my country, get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. I agree 100%, my man. Hey, listen, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate your words, all right? Thank you. You have a good night. You too, buddy. Thank you. Take it easy. Well, we got one dialogue. Hey, it's these two again. What's up, guys? Were you watching? You got a little dose of uh, what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, g Woo! Actually, let's go up to them real quick. Hold on. I just have a quick question for you, if you don't mind. No, we don't want to make, make America. No, no, nothing. American, nothing American, nothing like that. I am Hispanic. Yes, I am. I am Hispanic. Well, well, hey, fair, listen, just give me a chance. Don't okay, eat me alive, right? I just have a quick question. I'm sure you ladies heard the news this week about President Trump being the first president to step into Korea, right? Yes, I heard about that. Sure. Yes. yes. Sure. Sure. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Buddy, I didn't, I didn't know you had that sign. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm just gonna re Another reason is we, uh, our country goes out. We'll bomb another country, and we'll give them $30 million, but they'll say, screw our people. But they'll let another country come in, a foreigner come in, and they'll give them a $2 million grant, a gas station, 10 years of rent free, and when their 10 years is up, they'll give that, give that gas station to their son or their cousin. Well, now they got another $2 million grant and another 10 years. And if you understand how big Middle East families are, there goes all our money. Do you think Trump deserves the Nobel Peace Prize for being the first person to at least step into North Korea? I think he should be nominated for it because he's the one that's had enough balls to go into Korea and tell him, "Hey, you know what? This is what's on. The, this is how we're going to do this." Right. I mean, as I, every other president we had, we always, oh, we're doing peace talks, we're doing negotiation. No, you're over there bullshitting around and making business deals and with terrorists. That's what y'all do. Trump is the one going and saying, "No, this is my country. I'm the child. I'm the chain of command. This is the way it's going to be." Hey, that's awesome, man. Hey, you mind holding the microphone real quick? Thank you, man. I'm going to give you a little something here just because I know how rough it is out here. If I can find it. Hey, buddy, th there's oh. two bucks for oh, you, God all right? God bless you, man. Let's ask, let's ask this lady right here. Hold on. Let's find out. Hey, excuse me, ma'am. Just a quick question for you. Uh, just want to know, did you hear about President Trump going to North Korea this week? Yeah. All right, you have a good one. I'm guessing by that blue hair, though, you don't like Donald Trump, right? I don't have any uh, opinions on that. Are you a liberal? <laughs> you don't have to answer. Just go downstairs. Why do you say that, ma'am? Okay, for one, you have a microphone in our face. That's why. Well, you just... Oh, wow. Wow. We see some fascists here. Hey, hey guys. Just a quick question for you guys. Um, careful, there's people walking behind you. Uh, what do we got? Go. Traffic jam. Great, great. So just a quick question, guys. I'm sure you heard the news this week about President Trump visiting North Korea. First president ever. Okay. This week or previously? Previously. Previously. Right. He, he was first president to step over the border. Yeah. Okay. In regards to what exactly? Well, my question here is, do you think President Trump deserves a Nobel Peace Prize for being the first president to go to North Korea and to establish peace between America and North Korea? I don't know enough about that, truthfully, to be able to say. Do you know that Obama won a Nobel Peace Prize in 2009? For visiting North Korea? No. For far less. What did he win okay. a Nobel Peace Prize? So uh, Obama basically won a Nobel Peace Prize for uh, strengthening diplomacy among Americans. In other words, no, this was in 2009. Before all that, this was in his this was in his first eight months of presidency. So 2009. What did he actually get the Nobel Peace Prize for? Basically, just strengthening diplomacy. That was it. No, no, no actual action. Right. So basically, uh, strengthening the. There was no actual substance to what he to to what he actually won. Correct. There was really no. There's only four presidents in U.S. history that have actually won Nobel Peace Prizes. Um, the first one, 
the first the first two that won Nobel Peace Prizes for, were for ending wars, so big things. Um, the third one, which was Jimmy Carter, same thing as Obama, just a diplomacy thing, strengthening the American people. So yeah, he did. Yep, he did. I know. Look, I in Al Gore in 2007. <laughs> well, it's funny because Al Gore actually won one too in 2007 for combating climate change. What, what was your question again? So do you think? So do you think that? Um, Donald Trump deserves the Nobel Peace Prize for being the first president in history to not only visit North Korea physically, but also establish peace, try to establish peace between the two countries, America and North Korea. Okay. I, to be entirely fair and entirely honest, I think that he's had a valiant effort at establishing peace between, between the two countries. I don't know that we're far enough along it to actually say one way or the other. I think the efforts that he's made so far have been substantial. You're talking about Trump, not Obama, right? <laughs> he's full. He's, he's full of it. He's no, a I joker. Like, I like what you're, what you're saying. No, no, no. But actually, like he's he has done a substantial amount to actually get us somewhere, and I think he le he legitimately cares and wants to do something between the two countries, between between America and North Korea, that it that neutralizes a threat. Essentially, and, and I think that, that that much has been clear. Whether or not North Korea stands up to their side of the agreement is... So do you think that um, Donald Trump deserves a Nobel Peace Prize for being the first president in history to not only visit North Korea physically, but also establish peace, try to establish peace between the two countries, America and North Korea? Okay. I... To be entirely fair and entirely honest, I think that he's had a valiant effort at establishing peace between between the two countries. I don't know that we're far enough along it to actually say one way or the other. I think the efforts that he's made so far have been substantial. He legitimately cares and wants to do something between the two countries, between between America and North Korea, that it that neutralizes a threat. Essentially, and, and I think that, that that much has been clear. Whether or not North Korea stands up to their side of the agreement is, who knows, who knows. Um, but I, I don't, I don't know that we know enough at this point to say one way or the other. That's the objective take. Yeah. Thirty thousand foot view. If you're not a liberal and or uh, anywhere between liberal and then leaning towards socialist. In your 20s and 30s, you probably don't have a heart, is how the saying goes. But if you're still one in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, you probably don't have a brain. Spot on. Couldn't have said it better myself. And so, for all the people out there that are kind of caught up in this wave of liberalism and progressivism, I don't want to demonize you and shun you and, and push you into the shadows. It's understandable. The arguments are at the forefront of the cultural discourse. And so, and the media is pushing those arguments uh, way more, way disproportionately than they are pushing the legitimate arguments of a conservative perspective. So it's understandable that the majority of people of our age are kind of falling into that camp. Give it a decade or two, and, ho and we'll see where people are at. I'll take one more, one more and I'm going to turn this over to... The one and only Moni Spice on Twitter. You can find her at Moni Dash Spice. That is not a handle of anything. The only point I want to make is that, just to piggyback on what you're saying, if you're living in mommy and daddy's basement, you're taking out student loans, you're going and getting your liberal arts degree, you get your first job, you're finally making 30k plus and you have to pay taxes, that's when you start to realize real that, world. exactly, the politicians that we elect, it's important that we actually think about not their personality, but the policies that they stand for. That's all I want to say. Here's, here's, a, here's a piece of advice. <clears throat> I think, honestly, when you're doing this, you should maybe lose the MAGA hat. And I'll tell yes. you... No, 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 no. This, you, you know what? You're not the first person that's told me that. And I, I think I know why, but go ahead. I mean... Not not that it'll present you more objective, but it brings with it a stereotype. Yes, it does. And, I mean, at the end of the day, I think all of us are open-minded enough to, to have, a like conversation, co have a conversation one way or the other. Right. And I think that, that alone comes 
with a predisposition to the conversation where somebody somebody wouldn't be willing to open up in the way that they should if yeah it's supposed to provoke a response though Claudio like that I guess it is it's supposed to provoke a response but you're right that's yes. The reason that I said I think it was, you're absolutely right. I've had people that told me that I shouldn't wear it because, it'll, like you said, it'll give people this predisposition that I'm right. already set a certain way and they're not going to want to talk to someone because they think I'm close-minded, right. all of these horrible things. Right. And right. In reality, that's not what it is, but they don't know any better. So. I sure. People, I had one yeah. guy, I had people call me sellout tonight <laughs> telling me that. I've had people so far tonight telling me I'm a sellout. One guy said he wanted to punch me. Um, you're yeah. You're a sellout. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. That, can I ask? I, I want to get back to you because you made some good points too. Are you conservative? Absolutely. I'm conserv- I'm a conservative libertarian. Let me do this for your viewers. I, I'm going to point this back on you because I we have to we no we have to go. But I, I want to point the, I want to point the camera back at at this guy really quick to say mad respect to you because you are subjecting yourself to public scrutiny. You're putting yourself out on a limb. You're probably having a lot of really difficult conversations. You're probably triggering a lot of people with the hat, and yet you're willing to handle all of that because you believe that the conversation itself is valuable enough. And I want to zoom in the camera on you because, seriously, mad respect. You're taking a, probably a beating out here on the streets, but you're doing so because you believe in free speech, you believe in the freedom of ideas, and you're willing to have the conversation with people to make a maybe a tiny dent in their world view and good for you man my name is joel brown i uh i'm i'm with a facebook page called the free men report so we're trying to grow there so yeah so you're not well i appreciate that thank you so can you say that again you're not a sellout i believe any anyone that comes to this country no matter what color nationality sexual orientation you can make a life for yourself with zero dollars in your pocket it's possible hey spot on Really quick, guys, like and subscribe. It's Joel. We're here on the streets of Orlando. This is my dog right here. Um, He, I'm telling you, I said earlier, but he is going out of his way. He's subjecting himself to tremendous scrutiny. Yes. And And, And I have a lot of respect for him. Who, who, who are you voting for in 2020? It, it, assuming oh, assuming geez. all the Democrats are on the table, who are you going to vote for in 2020? Trump, Joe Rogan, 2020. All right. Ron, Ron Paul, 2020. Ron Paul, good answer. Yes. Ben Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs> ben Shapiro, I love it. Ran Ron Paul, 2020. <laughs> all right. Hey, guys, appreciate everything, all right? You have a good one, all right? I appreciate that, brother. I appreciate it. You enjoy yourselves. Hey, buddy, mind if I ask you just a quick question, man? I'm sure you heard the news this week about North Korea, President Trump, first president to go on to North Korea. Did you hear about that? Yes, I did. How do you feel about that? I think it's precious. Cute little display. Why do you say that? I don't know. Some buffoon with a little toddler. It was kind of neat. Okay. Well, I'm, I guess I know the answer to this next question. Do you think Donald Trump deserves a Nobel Peace Prize for being the first president in history to go to North Korea? It's an interesting criteria. It is, isn't it? Uh, can you elaborate a little bit? How do you feel? Well, uh, on the on paper, it sounds impressive, the first president. To, but, I mean, obviously North Korea hasn't been a very... They're rough. They haven't been a good actor, right? So I, I don't know what the benefit... I, I don't know what the, uh, like the, the genius behind making contact with your worst enemy is necessarily. Well, I guess that's the whole point, is that they're trying to stop being worst enemies. They don't want America doesn't want to be under the fear of North Korea. That's why Trump actually uh, convinced Kim to denuclearize. He got rid of the denuclearization program, and now he was the first president to go to North Korea. And now they're working on things, so you know. But did he convince him to denuclearize? Why do you say that? I don't know. I, is, I, have they? Do we know that? Ha, have they made steps toward it, it? It's a work in progress. It's still in the beginning stages. So that's a fair. That's a fair analysis. But realistically, if it does end up, uh, you know, getting better, if they if they do meet again, if they do keep on working towards the peace movement, do you think then maybe Trump would be deserving of a Nobel Peace Prize? Maybe it, it seems so far fetched, but I'm a, my mind is open to the possibility. Well, you're already better than most of the people I've spoken to here. Yeah, I imagine right. But you know, if he can uh, broker some peace and make some headway, I'm all for that. You know. Maybe Trump is the perfect guy to connect. Do you think Obama would have done any better? 
I don't know. I mean, Obama's pretty. Pe- he won the Nobel Peace Prize. Yes, he did. You're the second person that's actually knew that. Actually knew that. That's told me. Do you know why he won it? Uh, for his uh, no. Well, it w- it was basically because it was eight, it was eight months into his uh, first term, 2009. Yeah. He basically won it for uh, embracing diplomacy, essentially bringing Americans together. First black president, all those things, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, just a lot of. Uh, Things. It was a revolutionary president, so I'm not too surprised he won it. But he won it for far less than what Trump is doing right now. You know, he won it more uh, for less specific things. You know, where Trump has this sort of big bang with North Korea. We'll have to see what happens there. Would you Would you consider voting for Trump in 2020? I don't think so. No. Are there any of the Democrats that you like? I, I no, 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 there either. Me neither. I, I like the idea of Trump, but yeah, uh, you know, I like the idea of his being disruptive he's very disruptive i just don't like him uh as a leader it just seems like he's i don't like the fact that he represents my country because he's kind of an oaf in many ways so is it really just his demeanor that turns you up i I think that counts demeanor and uh, and being presidential and all that stuff sort of counts he is after all aside from when you know if you're talking purely measurable results maybe he holds up against other presidents but as far as uh, being a representative of America, I think he he scores poorly in my book as far as I go. His approval ratings are higher than Obama, though. He's got that core audience, right? Yes, he does, for sure. He uh, raised $24 million in 24 hours after he announced his second campaign. Bernie Sanders got $6 million. I'm not going to say only $6 million because that's still a lot. But $6 million in 24 hours as opposed to $24 million, it's a pretty big difference. It's kind of a scary thing for me that there. I, I think Trump feeds into uh, an element in our country that is ugly to me. I, you know, I, 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 uh, I think he he um, forwards division. You know, I, I think he pits certain elements in our country against each other. You know. So I, don't know. I would ar- I, I can see what you mean, but I would argue that the mainstream media is actually responsible for that because they spread a lot of fake news that gets people going, and then they think that Trump is the worst person in the world, and that's what creates the divide. What do you think? Well, the mainstream media, whatever media, all they do because I'm not listening to the commentary. I'm just watching his speeches. You know, I see. Yeah, those come pure and untainted without commentary. So. You can't blame the mainstream media. He, he, he does get a crowd going, though, you got to admit. The crowds that go to his shows love his stuff, you know, but he's speaking to an echo chamber, right? So his, his act wouldn't go over very well in all circles, but he's got fans. Uh, there's this great polarization happening right now, That's which I don't like. Yep. And, and, uh, and Trump is behind that. Like I said, I like his the way he was being very disruptive of the status quo. I think we we're all ready for a change. I didn't vote for Trump, but I was, ex- uh, but I was willing to say, okay. But you're willing to at least see what he has to say. Absolutely, and see what he can do. Right. And you're, you're already taking a, a bigger step than most people. Most people just, they see. I can't tell you how many people I've seen tonight. I had one, two people tell me because I'm Hispanic, I'm a sellout. Yeah. People telling me that uh, they, one guy wanted to punch me, um, and, and I'm just like, wow, yeah, very divisive. And and it's funny because they claim Trump and his supporters are the ones that are divisive. But I've been nothing but kind to everybody tonight, and people have just been so rude, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, when you ally yourself with a guy who has said some things that seem divisive, people are going to associate you with those people. That's fair enough. I will say that uh, I went I went down to the Trump rally because I was on my way home. I went to the anti-Trump protest happening across, yep. Yeah, you know, at the stadium, right? Yep. I was surprised at the, the, the diversity of people who support Trump. I was actually a little bit surprised by that. It is shocking, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Given what the media... It's more than I thought it was. I mean, it's not as much as the Democratic Party, of, of course. course right. But um, it was more than I thought it was. <coughs> Excuse me. I think a lot of minorities are opening up to Trump now because they're seeing all of these numbers. They see that, you know, record stock market, record unemployment for blacks and Hispanics, and that's a, that resonates with a lot of people. A lot of people thought Trump was going to crash the economy. They thought we were going to be in a recession because of him. But it seems like it's the complete opposite, and they're scared to, to say that because it's going to show that they were wrong all along. Here's the thing. Um, blacks have long voted Democrat. They have a long history of voting. Over 90% of them do vote Democrat. That's right. And you know what? The Democrats haven't done a whole lot for them. And I think black people, there's some dissatisfaction over the years with our executive branch of government. And so 
I think he got a lot of votes that we'll never hear about from the, the black community. I think so too. And and I'm not I'm not black, but I am Hispanic, and I'm also part of that minority category. And it's scary, even putting on this hat, coming out here. I'm, I mean, I get more comfortable as the minutes go on, as more people I talk to. But it's scary out here, man. There are people, like I said, guy wanted to assault me. People are telling me I'm a sellout. They, people just straight up reject talking to me. If I wasn't wearing the hat, I bet they talk. But because I'm wearing it, they, they don't want to talk. It's funny, you know. Here's the thing. I think that the idea of a Trump is not a terrible one, but Trump, we deserve a better Trump. There, there's a, there's a, he's a, a, more, a more diplomatic Trump. Maybe he's uh, in a more intelligent and more savvy and political. He's pretty smart. Ah, he, well, you think? I mean, it, you can't be dumb, be a billionaire, and be president on your first run. You know, a, a, as an outsider. I guess so. Yeah, maybe. But I, I think we can do better. That's all. I, and I think the idea of what he's trying to do is okay, and on many regards, as far as cleaning up Congress and and maybe getting the advantage back over some of these other countries like China and stuff. I just don't like the way he does it. I, don't like I get you. I get you. So basically, you like what he is doing in a way, but at the same time, you wish he'd be a little more charismatic, more diplomatic, yeah. more um, careful with what he says. We've had two flavors for many, many years. We've had chocolate or vanilla. Trump is strawberry. But I think we can do a better strawberry. We can have a better strawberry. So I'm sure you guys... You lady, excuse me, heard this week that uh, President Trump was the first president to step into North Korea. Did you hear about that? Yeah. How do you feel about that? I, I don't know. Do you think Trump deserves a Nobel Peace Prize for being the first president to have the boss to step into North Korea? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. Honey, just let's, I, I can't even give you, I mean. <clears throat> let, let me make it easier. How do you feel about Trump? Um... There's pros and cons to the man, but I think that he's... What are the cons, if I may ask? Um, he's just really not a very good person, you know? I would disagree, I mean, but I mean, go ahead. I just don't think that he he has no tact, and he has no political mind for like considering how other people in other demographics historically feel and how oppression works and how he comes across and that is not presidential behavior at all whatsoever so while he has pros which i acknowledge those outweigh the pros can we just look at your signs can you spare anything to help me out? i can't can, but but on one condition you let me ask you some questions thank you all right five bucks if you can just answer some questions okay your sign says, I need weed and fuck Trump. Did you hear about him being the first president in history to step into North Korea? No. No? Well, he did that. He actually stepped foot in North Korea with Kim Jong-un, first president in U.S. history to do so. That's pretty breaking news. Obama didn't do that. No president before that has done it. And because he is the first president to step foot in North Korea and is working on making peace between the two nations, do you think Trump is deserving of a Nobel Peace Prize? I wouldn't go that far. Why not? Do you know? Did you know Obama won a Nobel Peace Prize in 2009? No. Do you, okay, well, I was going to ask you, you know why, but I'm guessing you don't. Um, he actually won it just for essentially strengthening diplomacy eight months into his presidency. He didn't really do anything substantial at that point, far less than what Trump has done in his first two years. So I, I let me ask you this. If Trump continues to strengthen peace between our regions, do you think if he won the Nobel Peace Prize, would you support that? Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. For those of you that tuned in, I'll be uh, going back, looking at this, editing. This will be on the YouTube channel. Ultimate Killstorm is my YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe. Like us on the Facebook page, The Free Men Report. That's the Free Men Report on Facebook. We've been deep boosted on Facebook. They're trying to take us down, and we need all your support right now. So anything helps, folks. I hope you all have a wonderful night, all right? This is Joel Brown signing off. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. For those of you that tuned in, I'll be uh, going back, looking at this, editing. This will be on the YouTube channel. Ultimate Killstorm is my YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe. Like us on the Facebook page, The Free Men Report. That's The Free Men Report on Facebook. We've been deep boosted on Facebook. They're trying to take us down, and we need all your support right now. So anything helps, folks. I hope you all have a wonderful night, all right? This is Joel Brown signing off.